Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the Just Cause TV Week 4 NFL Pick'ems and Survivor Picks. My name is Anthony, and as always on these NFL videos, I will be joined by the co-founder of the channel, Cousin Steve. How you doing, man? What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, Tuesday. NFL's back. Week 4. Time to kick some Dr. West booty. Ooh. Here we go. Speaking of Dr. West, he is our special guest, as always, on these NFL videos. How you doing, man? How's it going, Uncle Anthony? Yes, let's keep it rolling. <laughs> I am a different I, family member every week. Every week. <laughs> Why are shots already being fired at me? Because, as you will see, once we get into the prior week results here, somehow, some way, despite all of the differences that we had last week between all of this, you somehow won by one game. Ooh, <laughs> love it. I was I, worried. I was not feeling good about last week. Yeah, I, I don't understand. I'm confused i'm perplexed that you still somehow pulled this win out of your butt on week it wasn't three. me being good it was you guys being bad so that's all right it's, i'll take it well you know what that is a perfect segue dr west because speaking <laughs> of bad before we get into any games this week i just want to highlight this absolute <laughs> dumpster fire of a, of a division we got here in the nfc east what is so this bad. what is this who ties the Bengals? Who does that? We got yeah. a tie with the Bengals. We got the Cowboys, who honestly should be 0-3. Uh, that lucky Falcons win. We got Washington. Honestly, probably, let's be real, should be 0-3. What? The Eagles should be winning this division with a tie right now. <laughs> You're exactly no right. This is this is hot fire garbage. Anybody could win this division. Honestly, I don't, get, I don't give a crap anymore. Go the W's. That's right. <laughs> Go to the Washington Buckeyes. Yay. Woo. Yeah. And unfortunately, Steve, speaking of hot garbage, Woo. that's going to take us to our Thursday night game. We've got the 0-3 Denver Broncos traveling to the 0-3 New York Jets. The spread, a measly two and a half points. Uh, the over under set at 40. So here, here on Thursday night, right, we got this battle of the 0 and 3 teams. Unfortunately, one of those is Steve's Denver Broncos. Uh, the J E T S have looked absolutely pathetic so far <laughs> this year. While Denver is still going to be missing key pieces such as Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton, and Von Miller. Uh, just saw very shortly they just signed Brett Ripien. Okay, Steve, take this one away from me, please. So he was off the practice squad. Um, if, if you didn't know that. They did sign, um, uh, who's the old Jags quarterback? Blake Bortles. So that's that's a thing. Oh, boy. Uh, sure, why not? But, you know, <laughs> oh we've had a carousel of quarterbacks. I think something on Fox said that we've had like eight starting quarterbacks since Peyton Manning retired, which is like the most in that span. Uh, it's, it's ugly, a quarterback. But even Vegas thinks us with – Every other person on the history of the world being on IR for our team, we're still going to beat the crap out of the Jets. Uh, we just did put our right tackle on IR as well, so that's another guy down. So, you know, check that one off. Hooray. Uh, this is not a great season. Uh, it's kind of a wash at this point with all the injuries. With so many key pieces, both of our pro bowlers are down on IR. Uh, looking at this... Uh, you know, I think the spread is probably right. It's, you know, kind of a toss up just with the, the Broncos being so hurt and the Jets being so bad um, over under. I would I would almost take the under on this, to be completely <laughs> honest, because their defenses, their defenses are better than their offenses and their offenses are terrible. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, but that being said, I still think my Broncos get the first one of the year here uh, against the lowly, lowly Adam Gase uh, trash uh, led Jets. Oh, bless you. Uh, Dr. Yeah, West. Oh, sorry. Good to take. <laughs> yeah, Dr. West, are you signed with Steve for the first time what seems like forever? Uh, no, I'm not. Woo! Uh, <laughs> Shocker. I just want to fight him again. <laughs> I mean, you guys were complaining about the Dolphins versus the Jags last week at on Thursday night. I think we would take that over this trash. Um, I, I don't know. I just... I can't. I know that the Jets are horrendously bad, but I I have to imagine they can beat like a practice squad quarterback. I could be wrong with with like a backup. Like half the offensive line is gone, half the defense is gone. I have to imagine that a fully staffed professional team can win. But what do I know? I mean, they're, we'll they're it's going to be few, ugly. They're like borderline professional. Just so you know, like Le'Veon yeah, Bell's sure. gone. They're they traded away their best player. And Jamal Adams, like, 
they're they too are borderline professional. <laughs> like there was a D league in NFL football. The Jets are surely getting demoted this year. <laughs> <laughs> that that literally leads me to my note. <laughs> my note says Denver has at least looked like a football team. The Jets appear to still be stuck in Pee Wee football. Um, as as Uncle Anthony, you know, breaker of ties, first of my name. I am going to take the Broncos here. I mean, Adam Gase, the guy just doesn't get it, man. He just doesn't get it. Sam Darnold looks okay. I've seen a couple of highlight plays for him, but nothing that screams I can beat this Denver defense, um, even at home. It's uh, it's going to be the Broncos for me here. I mean, I feel bad for Darnold, honestly. He seems like he would be, if he had the right, like, just mentorship, he, w- he would be a good quarterback, at least a serviceable one. But he's just suck on that. He's stuck on that suck of a football team. Yeah. And suck of a coaching staff. It's if Adam Gase loses this game, well, let's just say Denver wins this game 31 7. Adam Gase, I think he could go, honestly, at that point. Oh, yeah, if they get spanked, like destroyed yeah. at home against an 0 3 injury riddled Denver team, oh, yeah, it's yeah. possible that he's like, ha ha, ha, get out. He gone. He can do that little weird eye thing he was doing with, you know, the preseason where he's looking around like a, like a crazy person right out the door. <laughs> right. You can do that uh, on the street. Get, yeah. Get out. Get out. That takes us to our first Sunday game we're going to go through. We've got the 2 and 1 Indianapolis Colts traveling to the. Nick Foles now led Chicago Bears. Uh, question the, mark. The, the question mark? Yeah, the Colts come <laughs> in as, as a road favorite. You know, the, the Bears a home dog, despite, you know, BDN. You all know what that means. Taking over for uh, Chicago here. Uh, I mean, surprise, surprise, right? The Mitch Trubisky Circus lasted two and a half games, and he was replaced in the third quarter last week by Nick Foles, who led, you know, poor Falcons, right, at this point. Led another come-from-behind victory against the Falcons. Uh Indianapolis comes into this game on a high. They throttled this Jets team we just talked about, 36-7. to So, Dr. West, can Nick Foles lead the Bears to a surprising 4-0 start? Or can Indy spoil well, that parade? I don't know. I mean, I, it was definitely a good move bringing Nick Foles in. I mean, he, any, like we said at the beginning of the season, anything's better than Trubisky. And, uh, you know, just the classic Falcons. I, I, I saw the stat that was like they were like 99.6% to win with like 10 minutes left in the game. Like and they still lose. With that too. It's insane. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just the Falcons doing Falcon things or if the Bears are much better with Foles. I... Um, I never thought I'd say this, so I'll take the Bears. Taking the new Nick Foles Bears. Steve, do you agree with Wes here? Uh, honestly, uh, I kind of do. Uh, whoa, whoa. So, and I'll tell you why. Right, crazy, right? Somebody write this down. Take a picture of this moment. Uh, Nick Foles, uh, I saw, is something like 1-4 in four or 2-6 in six or something like that as, a, as the starter coming into this season. He is like nine and one or like 11 and one as coming into the season as a backup. He is the quintessential go-to backup and that's where he started. That's where like he needed to be as a person, as a guy. We saw what he did with the Eagles. I think that Nip Foles is back. I think he's healthy. He jumped over that Mitch Traberski hurdle. If you could even want to call it that more like a crack in the sidewalk. You almost tripped over. Uh, and it, He's he's in it to win it. Uh, I just I'm not confident in Philip Rivers still. He's been proving that kind of week after week. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go with the Bears. It's I'm gonna be different from you two this time. Uh, this Bears team is they just frustrate the ever living out of me. Like I don't dislike them by any means. I just when I see them, they're just not a very good team. Uh, they did just lose Tariq Cohen. and David Montgomery looks good. But somehow, some way, this team is 3-0, and and I, I don't know why. I can't figure it out. Uh, I said this last week. The Bears can't get to 3-0, and right? And they did. So let's run it back. The Bears, they Just can't get to 4-0, and right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Mark? There's just – there's no way. Give me the Colts. Who would have thought it was the Bears versus the Packers and – you know, trying to win that division. And who would think that the Bears could handedly win the NFC East if they were in a different division? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just insane right now. The NFC is just, other than the NFC West, which is hot fire, I feel like, everything else sucks. Like, <laughs> the Saints are one and two. What is happening? Like, yeah. NFC, figure, figure it out. Get it together. Get your life together. <laughs> that takes us to two teams that need to get their lives together. We've got Jacksonville traveling to the 
Wes's favorite, still winless Bengals, who tied the <laughs> Eagles last week. The spread, the Bengals, you know, home favorite, three points, pretty standard over under set at 47 and a half. Oh boy, our hometown Bengals, right? They blew that late fourth quarter lead to the Eagles last week. Uh, then somehow, neither team scored in overtime, resulting in yet another tie for this Bengals team. Uh, they just can't seem to find a W at this point. Uh, the Chargers, or the Jaguars, on the other hand, they started off hot with a win versus the Colts, but have come back down to earth in losses to the Titans and the Dolphins. Uh, it looks like the Jaguars may be who, they, who we thought they were at the start of the year, you know, play the clip. Uh, so, Steve, will the Bengals find their first one at home, or will Jacksonville continue to find a way to prevent the Bengals from getting a win? So, Wes, are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Bengals win. Oh, oh right, write it down. Bring on the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're, the Bengals showed some grit, some gut. They're right there. Joe Burrow, I think he's on the cusp of a win. I think he's going to will this team into a win. I like that kid. I like his gumption. I like what he's about. Uh, and I just, I just think they find a way. I don't know how, I don't know why, but they find a way to pull it out. <laughs> Dr. Wes, I'm looking forward to this disagreement here. Uh, no, I'm actually going to agree. You guys oh. make me out to be a Bengals hater. I'm not a Bengals hater. Okay. I'm a Bengals realist. That's why I've gotten all of their picks right this year. You just got to set your expectations low. Just lower your expectations. Now I expect them to be able to handle the team that we thought was the worst coming into this season and you know, yes, they have one win. They have more wins than the Bengals, but I still think they're a worse team overall. Uh, James Robinson and uh, Gardner Minshew, they can only do so much. I don't know. I don't like saying it, but I, I'm going to take the Bengals. So I don't know. We'll see. Wow. So I'm actually with you guys here. I, I Jacksonville, going back to my intro for this game, they've come back down to earth. Uh, Gardner Minshew is not going to put in 95% of his passes anymore. Hence, they're not going to win many games. Uh I'm going to take the better quarterback in this matchup specifically. Uh, to me, it's easily Joe Burrow. Uh, he's finding Tyler Boyd in the slot. That's his go-to. It was in college. It is now. Tyler Boyd's his guy. That should continue here. So I'm going to take the Bengals as well in a clean sweep for us. Staying with one team in the AFC North, we have got Cleveland. Surprisingly, uh, this game could be perceived as a flipped record game, I feel like, at this point <laughs> of the year. But Cleveland comes in. They are 2-1, and one, traveling to the 1-2 very easily could be 0-3 Cowboys. Uh, Cleveland comes into this game 2-1 after back-to-back wins. Ha, 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 versus the Bengals and the Washingtons. Are those real wins? We'll find out. Uh, while the win, as I mentioned, the Cowboys are 1-2. They had to come from a high win against the Falcons. Uh, despite how well Dak Prescott has been playing, he currently leads the NFL with almost 1,200 passing yards through three games, right? That's almost 400 passing yards a game. While Nick Chubb comes into this game fourth in the league with nearly 300 rushing yards. Dr. West, who you got? Yeah, well, he has so many passing yards because they're always playing from behind. Like, mm-hmm. I, it, they the, the Cowboys defense doesn't get as much uh, harassment as they probably should be. I mean, they they put up, they give up points like crazy. They're so porous. Um, that being said, I will begrudgingly take the Cowboys. I think they're just a better overall team. But if they lose today, I mean, this week, watch out. Yeah, Mike it, McCarthy, watch out. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to, you can, I can see Jerry Jones raining hellfire down on Mike McCarthy if they lose to the Browns at home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jerry tends to keep coaches a long time, but he's not going to tolerate, a, I mean, a top five pick. He does not want that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Steve, are you with Dr. West here in this game? Uh, I, you know, I kind of want to be, um, but for the sake of, I guess, uh, you know, switching it up and I, this is a toss up game for me anyway, cause I just, I don't trust the Cowboys at all ever, you know? So they're hard, they're hard team to, to trust. Um, and I just think, uh, sure. Why not the Browns, you know, against this, this Dallas team who doesn't, like he said, who has no clue how to not give up points. Um, I think they're going to have to put it on Baker Mayfield's back. I know this Dallas team is pretty good against the run. Um, it's just they just get torched by good quarterbacks. Um, do I think Baker Mayfield is capable of it? Yes, maybe barely. Uh, do I think it's going to happen? Maybe. Sure. Why not? Browns. <laughs> Why not? That's like my Texans pick from last week. Why not? Why not? Like, How did yeah. that work out? It didn't work out. 
So <laughs> I'm hoping it, it was. Oh, they had the lead. They did have the yeah. lead. So in the fourth quarter. Uh, I'm hoping that Steve's Cleveland pick goes the way of my Houston pick here. Uh, I'm taking the Cowboys. Uh, Cleveland's two wins so far this year have come against teams with a combined one win. Yes, I know it's early, but the Bengals and Washington Washingtons have not looked like winning teams so far. While Dallas's offense has kept them in games, uh, won them in the game against the Falcons, uh, Dax looked pretty good. They're averaging more than 30 points a game. I think they can slow down Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt this game. So especially because it's at home, I don't think the Cowboys roll. I think four and a half is pretty solid, honestly. This could be one of those, you know, weird like 24-20 games or something like that. Uh, kind of slow, kind of murky. 55 for the over/under. In a game with Cleveland, I just they run the ball too much to get to that high of a total. I feel like maybe I'm completely off base here. Uh, Second I, highest of, sl- of the slate. Of, you know? It is, yeah. I just I feel like it's a little high for a game that involves Cleveland and their run game. Maybe it's just me though. I'd take the under in this game though, in the Cowboys. That will move us to the surprising one and two Saints traveling to take on the surprising one and two Detroit Lions, I feel like. Uh, again, surprising the key word here. One of these teams, honestly, I feel like should not be one and two. Uh, the spread is four points uh, for the Saints. And, you know, what seems like it should be a lot higher, something just seems off about this game. We mentioned, you know, it's a trap last week. Uh, is this a trap game? The owner said at 54. Uh, the Lions picked up a win against Myers and the Cardinals last week, while the highlight reel of Alvin Kamara keeps growing, despite the loss to the Packers on Sunday night. Uh, Steve, perhaps is this an easy pick, or will Detroit continue their momentum at home? Uh, I think it's an easy pick. I think the Saints are still a really good team. They've lost uh, a couple really, really great teams. Uh, so it's, you know, NFC is tough uh, at the top. Um, but, and I think I, w- I would, I wish the Lions were better. I like Matthew Stafford. I feel like I say it every week. I wish that guy does, you know, again, it's one of those guys that just deserves to be on a better team. Denver, trade for him. Um, Ooh. Yeah, that would be a good pickup. Yeah, I yes. like that a lot, yeah. actually. Trade? Would you would you trade two first for Matt Stafford? Uh, no, at this point, no? to be completely honest, I would trade Von Miller for Matt Stafford. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you guys yeah, got you guys got up. Chubb. Yeah, I mean, we have Chubb. We have a couple backup guys. Um, at that point, you know, to go on a tangent here, I guess about this, you know, trade that makes no sense. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, I mean, I would either trade Matt Stafford or, yeah, sir, why not throw in a first-round draft pick? The guy's got a couple years left. Hey, there's only 32, um, I think, right? 30, 30, yeah. yeah, he could uh, mentor 32. Drew Locke. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey. I don't... Hey, Devin, hey, John Elway, listen. if you're listening. Yeah, John Elway, if you're listening. Yeah, someone tweet this video at John Elway after we're done. <laughs> make him someone make some moves. Elway 7 to this. Yeah. Well, Welcome. Uh, Dr. West, are you agreeing with Steve here? He promised Matt Patricia a box of Twinkies with the trade. Then it really. I'll, 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 send, him, I'll send him a box of backward hats and pencils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and beard cream. Uh, or Matthew Stafford. He'd be like, fucking deal. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, I mean, if the if the Lions can beat the Cardinals and if the Saints can lose to the Raiders, it is certainly within the realm of possibilities that the Lions could beat the Saints. I'm just going to take the better team though which is clearly the saints and i'm going to take the saints but uh, i would not be shocked if uh, the lions made this interesting yeah this the 54 again 54 in a game with the lions i just oh i just don't know um honestly my note originally said the over under set at 54 because the saints are going to score 40 points because they're gonna get michael thomas back i still think that's the case um uh, the, the Lions team, I just don't see it, man. This team is a jumbled mess. I, I, honestly, Anthony Lynn could coach this team, and it'd be no different. I feel like same as Matt Patricia, there there'd be no difference between the two. Um, four points, not enough. Saints roll here. I think they get Michael Thomas back. They need him back, and this should be an easy win for New Orleans. That will take us to you will see on your screen here that the Pittsburgh Steelers are traveling to Tennessee. Uh, leave it to the three and Titans to have multiple, you know, COVID positive tests and try to ruin a good thing. We got going this year. Uh, the game itself. We'll get into that. The Titans are literally just a few plays away from being 0 at three after a two point win against the Broncos, a three point win against the Jags, a one point win against the Vikings, three games, three wins, total point differential, six points. Goskowski, he had six field goals last week. 
The combined record of the Titans' wins for their opponents is 1-8. and eight. Meanwhile, the Steelers have had close games themselves. They face the Giants, Broncos, and Texans, who have a combined record of 0-9. Uh, so in one of the fakest 3-0 and versus 3-0 and games we will ever see, Dr. Wes, which team's going to get to 4-0? and well, uh, I'll, I'll admit that I was wrong about homeless Ben, Ross, homeless Ben Roethlisberger this year. He has looked good. The Steelers have looked good, mainly because of their defense. But um, I, even before this COVID nonsense, I thought I was, I was going to take the Steelers. But now you're saying that they have this other distraction, and if you know the potential of having guys out being sick. I think you ha- I think that the the luck of the Titans is going to run out. They're going to get walloped in this game. Steve, do you agree? It's a I it's they have they come out and said who tested positive because I haven't heard it anything was about who it is. Three players and five staff, I think was the last that I saw. Four right. players and five staff. I have not heard names. Right. I heard three and five, but nothing specific on who it was, right? Yeah. Yep, nothing specific that I've seen. Yeah, this could be a weird week with the the practice and everything. Um, if it weren't for that, honestly, I'd probably go with the Titans. Um, and part of me still kind of does, to be honest. Um, I don't see the spread on there. So do you know what it is? They're, they haven't released lines they're yet because it. they're not knowing if this game is going to be played yet or not because of COVID. Ah, I see. Um, so, yeah, sure. If that's the case, if it doesn't happen, because no, is, is that a bet? Like, no COVID, it's never, not going to happen. Uh, no COVID, <laughs> no game bet. <laughs> right, yeah. Go with that one. This game's getting canceled, folks. It was rescheduled. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the Steelers do look good, but the Titans, they're just they're scrappy. They know how to keep games close. Um, they just hand the ball to Derrick Henry, and Ryan Tannehill just doesn't fuck up, and it gets some wins. I so. think this is one of the teams, though, that's built to beat the Titans. Like, they have the defense to be able to stop Derrick Henry. And if you take away Derrick Henry, what are they going to do? T- Tannehill's not going to beat you. I mean, Tannehill can show up. He's not He's not terrible. He, you know, he got away from Adam Gase. <laughs> and got good. Okay, I have a question for so, you guys then. So, yeah. but we'll say we'll say our numbers back-to-back then. Between 1 and 32, think about it for a second. Where would you put Tannehill between number one and number 32 in the starting quarterbacks. If you're both ready, Steve, where would you put them? 15. Wes? I'm more along the lines of 24. 24? See, I put him around 20-ish, I think. Um, between the 20 and 25 range more, I would say. He, he just, yeah, I don't know. Tannehill versus this kind of defense, I feel like. Uh, from, from the eye test for me, Tennessee just looking, just they aren't looking fantastic, right? They gave up 181 rushing yards to Dalvin Cook. This is a team that's supposed to stop the run. And then James Robinson, the week before that, ran all over them. Uh, when it comes to playing against a team with you know a very elite defense, like I think the Steelers have, and James Conner can run all over them as well, I don't know if they're going to have the ball enough to beat Pittsburgh. It could happen. You know, we could be proved wrong here, obviously, but I just I can't see Tennessee beating Pittsburgh. Maybe it's just me. They, the, the eye test is just not there for me at this instance. Maybe it's just me, though. On that note, we'll get to a game that actually has some lines here. We've got the 3-0 Seahawks traveling to take on the 1-2 Miami Dolphins. The Seahawks, a touchdown road favorite with, you know, an over-under again. These all seem really high this week of 54. Uh, the front runner for MVP right now, Russell Wilson, has been on an absolute tear so far this year. He's leading the NFL, and he set the record with touchdown passes through three games with 14. Um, the Dolphins, they're fresh off their win Thursday night versus the Jaguars. Seattle's defense, it has been beatable so far this year. So, Steve, can Miami put up enough points to compete with Seattle, or can Russ continue to cook? Uh, I'm going to make this short and sweet. Uh, Russell Wilson, while I don't like the guy, is a great football player, and it's going to be Seahawks all day. Dr. Wes? I agree. They're my NFC champions. They're still looking like the NFC champions. They're going to roll. Yeah, this one literally, my note, not even kidding you, says this one's easy. Seattle, I have nothing else to say on this game. Uh, they have looked <laughs> unbeatable so far. This, the defense has looked beatable. Russ will not let them lose, especially to this lowly Miami team who is not good. Um, easy game here. Take Seattle. I think six and a half is not enough points. Uh, honestly, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I think this could yeah, easily get three. out of control quickly. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that will take us to, oh, I can't even talk about this team anymore. They are just frustrating <laughs> the ever-living out of me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the one and two Chargers traveling to the two and one box. The Bucks, a seven and a half point home favorite. The over under 45 here. Uh, can we even trust Anthony Lynn anymore? 
The Chargers, they're coming off one of the most embarrassing defeats of the season after they lost at home to the Panthers one week after almost beating the Chiefs at home. Uh, Tampa Bay, they come in with a head of steam. They may be without Chris Godwin after his hamstring injury last week. Uh, so, Dr. West, will this Chargers clown show be able to take down Tom Brady, or will the Bucks maintain their win streak and get to 3-1? and one? Uh, I don't see it happening. Um, I always want to pick against the Bucks because I think that the public likes them more than I do, but um, it's hard to argue against the Chargers that are just so poorly coached. I think that Herbert is pretty, he's going to be pretty good, I think, but yeah, that's uh, good. Not, yeah. enough, not enough to beat the Bucks. Steve, I know you're a Broncos fan. Lay to the Chargers here. Give it to them. Right. Uh, so at the beginning of the year, I called the Chargers, the, the Cowboys of the AFC, and they have continued to, to play into that over and over and over again. Uh, so it's not, I mean, you can, you can go back, play that clip, set it. True, true, true story. Can't confirm. Um, right, <laughs> confirmed. So true. Sad. Uh, <laughs> Sad football team. Uh, so yeah, I think it's the I think it's the Buccaneers. I don't know if seven and a half points. I don't know over a touchdown. That might be a stretch. I, if I was betting spread, I would probably go with the Chargers at that point. But for the win, it's the Bucks. Uh, Agreed. Yeah, I ugh, I hate this Chargers team, and I literally I hate myself for saying I like them in an AFC win total video that's on the internet right now. <laughs> Screw Anthony Lynn and this dumpster fire of a horrible team. Tyrod Taylor, I hope your lung is doing okay. It's not your fault. Anthony Lynn, you suck. You suck so hard. <laughs> Go Tampa Bay. Bucks, they absolutely roll this clown show of a team. Lost to the Panthers. What, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Just give me go. Okay. Uh, our next game. Yeah, go away. We've got, oh, geez. I, I feel bad for this Washington team this week. <laughs> We've got the two and one Ravens traveling to the one and two Washington Buckeyes. Uh, they are getting the Ravens after they were embarrassed by the Chiefs at home on Monday Night Football. Washington, they got obliterated by the Browns last week, 34-20. And sorry, Wes, they did not cover your plus seven bet that I we know, mentioned on I the show last it. week. Uh, Steve, this one seems pretty easy, right? Uh, yes. Uh, interesting stat. Uh, Lamar Jackson is 0-3 against the Chiefs, but 12-1 and versus everyone else. He will be 13-1 and after this weekend uh, against this team. I like that stat. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, Dr. West, are you backing your Washington Buckeyes this week? I can only do so much. Uh, <laughs> I can only will them to so many wins. Yeah, I, have, I have limits. Uh, this is one of those limits. I can't. Uh, I think the Redskins lost their nose tackle to... Hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. What would you call them, Dr. West? We're going to have to stop oh, that. Oh, dang it. Dang get, the, it. get the counter up on the screen. That's two weeks in a row now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many? Yeah. Ding. <laughs> That's another R word. Wes has slipped no, out. Washington yeah. Dan Snyder's. Uh, <laughs> they, I think they lost their nose tackle on their, their. They only are getting worse as the year goes on. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Ravens. Yeah, the, the Ravens this week. They are going to absolutely put it on the Washington Buckeyes Washington team this week. I would not be surprised if Baltimore got to 50 points themselves this week, honestly, after Lamar Jackson. I think he felt embarrassed. He didn't even throw for 100 passing yards last week against the Chiefs. After we just saw Justin Herbert light them up for 311 yards the week before that. Get, give me Baltimore all day long and give them to me twice on Sunday. 12 and a half isn't enough. It should be 24 and a half. Come on. Baltimore. You do make a good point about the over. That's a relatively low number for uh, you know the Ravens that could single-handedly put up that many points. I, I could see that. It, you got like seven touchdowns. That's in the realm this week, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, a pissed off it's going down Ravens team. Yeah. Yeah, against this team that you know this Washington team that they started off strong, which Dr. West, you absolutely called that, but I, I think they've fallen back into into just an obscurity or whatever this week. Uh, the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> That will take us to, we've got the Arizona Cardinals traveling to the one and two Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Panthers, a home dog, three and a half points, a field goal here over under, super high again, set at 52. Uh, but Car Cardinals, what are you doing? Like you lost to the lowly Lions last week. Uh, on the bright side though, sorry, Dr. West, I knocked you out of the survivor pool with my awesome pick there. Yeah, wink, wink. I knew you were going to do that. You're welcome. That's how we roll around here. Don't go with whatever I say. Too bad you couldn't change. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> Arizona, they, they traveled a, the fresh off a win against the Chargers Panthers. Uh, so, Dr. West here, will Arizona rebound or can the Panthers pick up back to back upset wins this week? This is so this is why freaking 
picking NFL games is so annoying. Like, okay, the Carolina Panthers lose one of the best players in the league and then they win. Like, yeah. what the hell? How's that uh, work? <laughs> and then the Cardinals go and play arguably the worst coach in the league and they lose. Like, wow, so frustrating. That being said, I just, like I do every week, I just have to pick the better team. And overall, I think the better team is the Cardinals. So that's who I'll take. Steve, you sign with Dr. West here? Yes, it's it's an easy pick here, I think. I mean, what were both teams doing last week, though? What What, what is happening? I mean, good for the Panthers being the Chargers, because fuck the Chargers. But Agreed! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Run it down. They tilt uh, me so hard. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But, uh, yeah, I just think, uh, you know, there's going to be growing pains. Kyler Murray is a young quarterback. That defense, uh, I mean, I think the Lions offense is good. Again, love Matthew Stafford. Come to the Broncos. Uh, sub yeah, tweet Cardinals, right? Yep. Sub sub. I'm in your brain. Yep. Come to the Broncos. The, this one also, this one's easy for me. I, I say it every week. I was having the Cardinals at the start of the year. They had a little minor hiccup, a little bump in the road. It happens with every, you know, team on the rise, like the Cardinals, they're going to lose some of these weird games. Not a chance this week to the Cardinals. So Steve, if you're, you're free to take the Cardinals now in the survivor pool, whereas Dr. West, you are not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Absolutely. I'm here for you, Dr. West. Just remember that. Uh, that takes us to the second game with potential COVID implications. Uh, after Minnesota played against the Titans last week, they have now shut down their facilities for COVID concerns. Uh, but speaking of the game, though, who in the world saw this coming, right? Both of these teams come into this game 0-3, and, and one of them, you know, if they play the game, of course, will surprisingly get to 0-4. The Vikings, they have looked bad after losses to the Packers, Colts, and Titans. Although, Dalvin Cook picking up steam. He did run wild against the Titans last week. Steve, which team will avoid the 0-4 start? So, I think the, the, the Texans, they had just had a gauntlet of a, a schedule. So, I think them being at 0-3 isn't or shouldn't be a huge surprise. I mean, as talented as Deshaun Watson is... And sort of, you know, some guys on that team, I mean, it is Bill O'Brien. He's going to mess some things up. So them being 0-3, not a huge, not a huge, like, oh, my God, they're 0-3. But the Vikings? Like, wow. Um, it, it's pretty crazy. Uh, if this game happens, I haven't heard anything official coming out of the Vikings camp in terms of anyone sick or anyone testing positive. Um, I just know they shut it down. If that is the case, I think the shutdown will affect them. I think being on the road will affect them. And I think the Texans will win this game. Dr. West, you siding with Steve here and taking the Texans? Uh, I will. Um, you know, if the Texans lose, I'm going to start counting my money for their uh, my under bet for the season. But uh, like he said, there's just too many things working against the Vikings right now. And I think the Texans are overall a better team. They've shown that they're, you know, functioning at a higher capacity right now. So I'm going to take the Texans. Yeah. Houston's murderous row of a start to the season. Uh, it's finally over. And I think they get this reprieve of a game. If obviously if it goes through with the Vikings, it's time for Deshaun Watson to finally get out there and play some football. We all know what he can do. Uh, Speaking of Deshaun Watson, though, if you're looking for a buy low quarterback in season long fantasy, I think you can get Deshaun Watson pretty cheap right now. Um, Houston wins this game. I think it's close. It being at home with the Minnesota COVID scenario, Houston takes the dub here and they go to one and three And my NFC North pick goes to 0 and four. The Anthony Jinx comes true yet again. It's huh. fantastic. Just cold. Thanks, teams. Anthony. Yeah, just it, it's unintentional, of course, but it has disastrous circumstances here, and Minnesota will probably go to 0-4. I did pick Houston as well to win the AFC South, so here you go. The Anthony Bowl taking place right before our eyes with two 0-3 teams. That takes us to our 4 p.m. games now. We have the New York Giants. Oh, my gosh. Look at that spread. Wow. <laughs> uh, the 0-3 New York Giants, they travel to Los Angeles here. Uh, there must be something in the water in New York. Uh, both the Jets and Giants are 0-3. Now they get to travel cross-country to take on the Rams. Who The Rams, they, they need this win, right? That NFC West is super competitive. It's hot right now. Uh, so, Dr. West, laughably, could the Jets pick up their first win here without Saquon, or will the Rams get to 3-1? The Jets can't, and neither can the uh, Giants. Uh, 
I'm gonna go. Yeah, I, I don't. You don't need to say much. It's definitely the the Rams. It's the Rams. Look at that spread, Steve. Are you siding with the Rams here? Yes. All right. Rams. Yep. I have to. Not much to say here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What do you What do you say about I, the, the the trash that is the New York team? This, so this game's a know. This game's a joke. I think this game goes like 35-10, something like that. The over under looks pretty good. This the spread. It. I mean, 13. That. Wow. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> we're we're side with the Rams here. I think that's pretty obvious. That takes us to. I think it's gonna be a really good game. Actually, we've got the three and zero Bills yeah. traveling to the two and one Las Vegas Raiders, second place in that uh, NFC or the AFC West. I apologize. The spread, three points. This is gonna be a good one. Fifty two and a half again. Seems really high. Current MVP candidate, not necessarily front runner, but candidate Josh Allen has a little more than a thousand passing yards through three games, which is good for second most in the NFL. Uh, this is going to be the second home game for the Raiders. So, Steve, the Raiders have been surprising this year by getting to two and one. Can they get to three and one in their new stadium at home? Uh, just like you with the Cardinals, I am still high on the Bills, and clearly that has been right. Um, that is the right call this so far this year. I think you know Josh Allen looks great. Uh, the team looks great. They they were gritty and a come behind win last week. Um, catching a touch, you know, throwing a touchdown pass with like 17 seconds left to win that game. So go Bills. I think the Bills win. Very very gritty this year. But again, like the Raiders have also been very gritty, right? Who saw them going two and one to start the year with games against like the Saints and whatnot? They lost they lost to the Patriots last week. Uh, Doctor West, you signed here with Steve. Or are you taking the Raiders? Steve and I have disagreed on the bills every time and he's ended up being right. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do. I keep getting them wrong. Um, I've been thinking about this a long time. I I think I'm going to have to go with the bills, but not confidently. Uh, I'll give you a ch- I'll give you a second to ponder there for a second, Doctor West. So we saw the Raiders; they come out and they dismantled right the Michael Thomas list Saints. Uh, in my opinion, though, I think the stadium opener had a little bit of emotion for the Raiders behind it. I don't think this game is going to carry that same momentum. It's another typical West Coast 425 Sunday game. Uh, Josh Allen and the Bills are hot. Steve called it. They're going to continue this hot run. Uh, I'm going to take the Bills as well and give Dr. West one reprieve here if he would like to take the Las Vegas Raiders and differentiate from Steve and I. Nah, screw it. Give me the Raiders. He's take. I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gave him the chance. He's taking the Raiders. We're gonna move away from this game. Those are locked in. No, no takes these backsies. We're gonna get to. I. Oh my gosh. I am so looking forward to this game. I am so ready for this game on Sunday. We've got the two and one doing the Patriots. The revitalized Cam Newton led doing the Patriots taking on. The 3-0 Kansas City Chiefs, who have this game at home, the spread is 7. The Kansas City is a 7-point favorite. Seems a little a little high for my liking, I feel like, but the over-under again. We've got a lot of big ones this game, 53-and-a-half. Offenses have been cooking so far. Uh, both teams in this game have been extremely fun to watch so far. Cam Newton looks fantastic, while Mahomes and the Chiefs are coming off a humongous road win against the Ravens. They are now in the driver's seat for the coveted one seed in the AFC. Uh, so, Doctor West, we're off with you here. I'll save I'll save my Patriots stuff for last. Who you got in this high flying matchup? I really like the Patriots with the points. I uh, I think this will be a really close game. I think this is probably a preview of the AFC Championship. Um, I'm completely sold on the Patriots. That being said, I think I will take the Chiefs. But I don't feel strongly about it. And again, I would definitely bet Patriots plus seven. Yeah, that Patriots plus seven is juicy to me. Maybe it's just my bias. I'm glad I'm glad that you've confirmed it. But just seven points in this kind of a game. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Steve, do you agree with Wes here? Are you taking the Chiefs? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I just seven. Honestly, seven sounds good to me. Um, I would almost take the, the Chiefs on the spread as well. So I think that I do think the Chiefs win. So I'll agree with them there. But man, if they come out and like. They come if he Patrick Mahomes Patrick make sure you call him Patrick his mom said so mm-hmm. um, if if he comes out and wants to pp smack some good teams he's going to do it and he clearly proved that against the Ravens so I don't I don't think the Patriots have a cold chance so that's to top Steve's hot take there not a cold chance I'm gonna have a hot take uh, so Kansas City to me this year they've been really weird and like I've watched all their games so far this year obviously they, they had the Thursday night game they had the game against the Chargers now this you know Monday night game against the Ravens uh, they struggled on the road versus the Chargers yes it was on the road this game is at the home then they come out and they absolutely obliterate the Ravens oh my gosh like Mahomes looked 
all all bit of MVP right there in that game. Something tells me they're going to have this yo-yo effect this year. That's what I'm going to call it, the yo-yo effect. They were up against the Texans. They almost lost to the Chargers, up to the Ravens. This is the down yo-yo week. I'm going to take the Patriots. I think Cam Newton, this is the statement game, right? This is like people are like, oh, Cam Newton's back, but can he beat the Chiefs uh, on the road in the regular season? I'm going to say yes. Bill, good old Bill, he's going to have some tricks up his sleeve in this game. In order to win these pickums as well, you're going to have to take some counter picks. I figured that both my, you know, partners here, Steve and Dr. West, were going to take the Chiefs, so I'm going to take the New England Patriots, and I'm looking forward to watching this entire game. Very, very excited for this one. That. Well, then, oh, do you have something, Steve? Sorry. No. Okay, per- cool. Say good luck. Good luck. Let's go. Yeah, good, Let's good go. I need this one. I'm in dead last in this stupid freaking pick. Anyways, uh, that now takes us to our Sunday night game. We've got the Philadelphia Eagles traveling to the San Francisco 49ers. The Eagles couldn't even beat the Bengals last week. They tied of all things. Come on. Uh, compared to last Sunday night uh, where we had, what was it, the Packers and the Saints, I could not have much less interest in watching this game. I do not care. We get the struggling Eagles led by Carson Wentz's league-leading six interceptions. On the road against what seems like a depleted 49ers team, where they just dismantled the Giants last week. Uh, so, Steve, can Philly pick up the upset on the road against the Niners, or will San Fran continue to win despite missing what seems like their entire team? I was high on the Eagles at the beginning of the year. That was very, very wrong, clearly. Um, I, I think Doug Peterson is a good coach, though. Um, I think the, the injuries eventually have to catch up with the 49ers. Um, and also you figure that the Eagles eventually have to win one. Um, this is, this is just my random, like, you know, softball moonshot in the dark here. Um, considering I, I like what you said, I think sometimes you just have to go against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. Um, but for, I think this is the most likely upset this week. Um, so I will go with the Eagles. Go on with the Eagles. Dr. West, you side here with the Eagles as well. I think it is a savvy pick to take the Eagles. I mean, everything everything would point to take the 49ers. And like he said, this is a game that could be an upset. That being said, I'm not going to overthink it, and I'm going to take the team that has looked better all year, and I'll take the 49ers. Uh, you literally took the words right out of my mouth there, Dr. Wes. Uh, Wentz looks terrible. Philly looks terrible as a whole. Honestly, watching them play, if uh, Ertz and Goddard weren't there, I don't even think this offense would know what to do. Miles Sanders is okay. He's been a bell cow for them, but uh, I think that San Fran is just a little bit too much for this Philadelphia team. I don't know. It's can't beat the Bengal. I, I, oh, my gosh. You tie the – okay. San, yeah, San Fran in this game. I do like Steve's pick, though. I could definitely see it happening. It's one of those weird, like, Sunday night games. Uh, that might not – honestly, I'll, what's your guys' interest in a level from 1 to 10 in this game? 2.5. Um, honestly, for me, it's high. It's probably like a 5. Just, okay. I'm curious to see if this pick comes through um, and see if this if the Eagles team can turn it around. But other than that – Yeah, I just – I feel like we've been spoiled with the Sunday night and Monday night games from this past week where I just like, Philly San Fran, what? I just don't well, know. Well, at the beginning of the year, that looked like a fun game. When it they did. Made the schedule. It did. Absolutely. Yeah. If Wentz didn't look absolutely putrid with his league leading interceptions, I, I think this game would be better. I just I think San Fran has the pieces still to shut down Wentz, especially at home. I think that's a key factor here as well. Uh, that will take us then to a game I'm actually looking forward more towards to than the Sunday night game. We got <laughs> the 0 and 3 Atlanta Falcons uh, taking on the 3 and 0 Green Bay Packers. Look at that over under guys, 58 points. That is intense green bay only a seven point favorite here despite you know they're going up against the winless falcons here uh if if atlanta has been one thing this year it's it's been the laughing stock of the nfl uh last week i said there is no way atlanta can choke this game away play the clip there is no way atlanta can choke this game away again right there is no way atlanta can choke this game away again right Uh. yeah and wouldn't you know it, they choked it away to Nick Foles and the Bears after being up 26 to 10 with six minutes left in the game. How is this even possible anymore? So, Dr. West, who you got on this Monday night? Super high scoring showdown. Until the Falcons prove they can win a game with having a sizable lead, I'm going to take the opposite team. They are just, they are proving themselves over and over again to do 
be, to be incapable of holding a lead. So give me the Packers. Steve, you side with the Packers here, or will the Falcons get a win here? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I can only throw up one softball per week, I feel like, and this would be my other one if I had to, but I'm not going to. I'm 100% with Wes. Until this team can prove that they can actually win a game, especially against Aaron Rodgers that is on fire, uh, it's going to be the Packers all day long. Yeah, thankfully, I say this laughably, thankfully, for all Falcons fans' sakes this week, they won't have the opportunity to choke this game away. They won't be ahead at any point. I think the game will stay, you know, within the realm of a, of a, of a game, I think. Uh, but the Packers win this game. Dan Quinn, he puts himself with you know, another loss closer to getting fired, I feel like. Not necessarily saying any of this stuff is his fault. These are just astronomical odds that we're seeing, right? The past two weeks, the Falcons have had a 99% chance to win, and they've lost. I don't, I don't know if I pinned it on the coach. I don't know if I pinned it on some sort of weird conditioning the Falcons have in the last six minutes where they're just gassed. I don't know what it is. It, what, do you, what do you guys think? What's the Falcons' problem this year? What, what do you see? Uh, I, it's, it's hard to tell. They're clearly a talented team. I just think they – it's got to be coaching, right? It's got to be – They don't have a go-for-the-throat mentality. They get up big, they score a bunch of points, they feel great about themselves, and they let off. You you can't do that. Prevent defense. Prevent defense. Yeah, Yeah, just just go out there and stand 20 yards off the line of scrimmage and then give them anything else. And teams are taking that anything else. (laughs) Also, when you stand and stare at an onside kick, I don't, I can't do anything for you. Yes. Uh, they just, they, you are helpless. Coaching, right. It's coaching. It's mentality. They're not, they don't have, as Vince McMahon put it, ruthless aggression. And they need it. And they just don't have it. They just don't have it. And it, it's not going to show up this week. You know who has ruthless aggression? Aaron Rodgers. He wants none of Jordan Love, I feel yeah. like. <laughs> he, he wants none of it. He, he wants his spot on the throat. Imagine going, what, they got 13 and 3 last year, and your team drafts a quarterback. I mean, this is the Aaron Rodgers show all day long. Yep. That oh, will yeah. then Great. take us to, would you look at that, Dr. West? Aren't you excited? You, <sighs> you ruined me. I've ruined Dr. West. It's fantastic. <laughs> we, you know what? For everybody's sake this week, I think I'm going to start off with uh, with my pick. To me, this is an easy one, I feel like. Uh, I, I don't care who the, the Ravens are playing this week. Uh, they're going to dismantle whoever they're playing. They just happen to get the Washington Buckeyes this week, who aren't going to be able to stop him. Uh, give me the Baltimore Ravens. Dr. West, per, uh, per your request last week, we'll let you go last. Steve, who are you taking this week for Survivor? Uh, sorry, Wes, if this is your pick. But uh, looking at uh, Russell Wilson when he's doing this year, don't like the guy. Hate Pete Carroll. Hate the Seattle Seahawks. But lock him in for a win. Dr. West, I'm assuming you're not going to pick one of our picks, are you? I am definitely not. I've learned not to do that. Uh, so give me the Rams versus the Giants. Taking the Rams. All right. We are officially locked in for Survivor. And that will just about do it for our week four pickums, guys. Uh, any, any final words on this week of games? Anything you guys are looking forward to this week? I look forward to uh, widening the gap against you guys. Widening the gap, and I'm pretty sure Steve's is wiping the Adam Gase led Jets clean on Thursday <laughs> night. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Arizona is get fired. Yep, yeah, he's if I mean literally if they lose this week, Adam Gase. Needs, even if they win, he should probably go. But that's a whole other story. Uh, that will do it, guys. Thank you again for tuning in this week. Uh, if you guys like the videos, again, we're gonna have one every single week. Hit hit the like button, please. You know, cons- please consider subscribing if you like the videos. Uh, we're still looking for punishment options. We're the top one so far is our um, Waffle House 12-hour punishment. If you guys are in for that, that's totally cool by me. If not, maybe we can come up with something on the side. Who knows? Uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see y'all next week. Thanks. See ya.